Coming up on KCCI 8 News Close Up, proposal that could send some teachers to jail lives on in the Iowa State House. Why some books could land those teachers in jail for up to two years. Transgender sports ban, what high school students and doctors told lawmakers about plans to limit transgender students to competing with athletes of their birth sex. COVID cases now just a fraction of what they were a month ago, why Unity Point says the pandemic is still having a big effect on patient care. This is Iowa's news leader. This is KCCI 8 News Close Up. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Friday marked the end of the Iowa legislature's first funnel week of the 2022 session. That means most bills needed to pass out of one full legislative committee to stay alive or they would likely be dead for the year. The funnel deadline does not apply to bills dealing with taxes or spending. And one of the most controversial bills that survived funnel week is one that could charge teachers or school administrators with an aggravated misdemeanor if they provide a student with a book considered obscene. An aggravated misdemeanor is punishable by a fine and up to two years in jail. And that threat of jail time was just one part of the bill that was hotly debated before the committee's vote. 99.5% of the teachers are great teachers, but we've got some teachers that have taken it upon themselves without parental consent to teach what I think is disgusting pornographic material. Um, I recently spoke at the Des Moines Partnership, uh, and it was brought up about this. Brad Zahn's trying to ban books. I'm not interested in banning books. What I am interested in is giving parents the power to decide. I think it's more appropriate for parents to have this conversation with their kids if they find that it's appropriate. It's pretty evident in regards to you know, some of the, the um, school board meetings that have been out there uh, where there's been parents that have talked about and, and actually read some of this material. And it's been banned and taken down from the school board's websites. Um, and so what, what are we talking about here? We're talking about scenarios where an adult is having sexual relations with a child. We're talking about a scenarios where a cousin is molesting his younger cousin. We're talking about a scenario where a brother is molesting his sister. I am not interested in putting teachers in jail. That's not what we're doing here. What we're trying to do is empower parents to decide if this material is appropriate. This bill covers the materials that are in the school libraries. It does not cover in the public library. I've had a parent say, well, they've got it in their public library. Well, as an old mayor myself, you know what? That's your job to talk to city council, which the city council is a person that, that appoints the library, the local library boards. But you can't tell me that 99.5% of our teachers are great teachers, are great people, and Iowa has the greatest, and then you paint them with a broad brush of people that are sinister, that are looking at ways of moving things in and out of our curriculum or library without our family consent. That doesn't sound like 99.5% are good. I believe they are. I trust them. Sure, I disagree with them, but I trust them. There are processes that talk curriculum. There are processes that talk about books. Parents have the opportunity to visit the school and visit with the school administration anytime they want. I'm watching the school board meetings and they're full. So when we say children, there are kids that are 17 in high school, 18. What they do they have to say? What do they have to say? Have they used any of this material. You mentioned about a cousin having sex with a cousin or a brother having sex with a sister or maybe they've experienced that and don't know what they've been through but now they see it in a book and they realize that it's wrong. People learn things in different ways in this society. Kids are groomed. They're groomed to keep their mouths shut and to be fearful. And as they grow, they know about their younger siblings. And they fear for them. 
but to say that they're learning from these books about the sexual deviations that are happening in this society, I say good. They've learned, and now maybe they can report. But at least they know. They know it's wrong, and they know when that stepfather or father or brother approaches a younger sibling, that maybe now they'll report to protect them. I know we have issues in this society. They're brought into the school. The school don't create them. But we think by hiding the bad things in life from our kids, somehow we're going to have a better society. Just don't let them know about sex and they won't have it. Don't let them know about drugs and they won't use them. No, no, that's not life. Because they learn a lot more from their friends every day than they're ever going to learn from you. The point is, is you've got to have a straight talk about what is reality, what is appropriate. And the schools are filling these niches because parents aren't doing it or they're setting a bad example. So a child that's going through some type of sexual understanding of themselves may not even know what's wrong, may not know who to talk to, may have brought it up and got laughed at, but maybe found the book that warmed their heart finally that they weren't an animal, that they weren't a rejected child, they weren't a deformed child, they weren't a God's mistake, because there wasn't any God's mistakes. And I don't care who you are, what you look like, how smart you are, what your sexual choices are, you're God's children. So he didn't make any mistakes. So don't treat these kids like they are mistakes. Some of these kids who maybe finally found the book and read it and started to feel good now feel shamed again because the whole state of Iowa was attacking that book. I ought to shut up, but I can't. Um, Okay, um, it, it, it needs to be said, and I'm going to try to be very temperate in this, because it, it can't, be re- uh, can't be left to do that, and I can work myself, myself up into the same frenzy. So, uh, so, uh, so I'm going to try to hold it short. If, if we are not willing, I do believe the 99.5%, maybe smaller than that. I got a feeling, and here we are, it's all adults. It's, I don't even know what's appropriate anymore with this upside-down world. If we've got a world where one-tenth of one percent of teachers are having sex with their students, we would come up here and we would pass a law. In fact, we have. If we had one-tenth of our teachers selling drugs to our students, we'd say that ought to be against the law, and we'd come up here and we would do that, and we've done that. If they're beating our students, we'd pass a law. If they were, I don't know, right now, everybody in your, in your mind, I'll just speak to the committee, that might be inappropriate uh, to talk, uh, but everyone on the committee Run through your thing, through your minds, things that zero percent should be doing, and then imagine if it was one tenth of a percent, would we pass a law? This, this is just simply doing our job because a problem has arisen that did not used to be happening. It's it's new. It's developed in this culture. Devil. The idea that in in response also the idea that these books and these images are teaching children what is wrong would sound like a good defense if the books and the images were teaching them that it was wrong. They're not. They're glorifying. They're normalizing. They are... Here's a grooming. I mean, here's where we'll bring our, 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 our word in. They're not doing that. They, they are telling a child that this is normal behavior that you should not be worried about and they are and the, and these are not images that we should be teaching children this 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 is beyond the bill now goes to the full Iowa Senate for debate and a vote but even if it passes there it faces an uncertain future in the Iowa House House Speaker Pat Grassley has said they're looking at making the school book approval process more transparent and that criminal penalties are not part of the House's conversation. Also before the funnel week deadline, the Senate Judiciary Committee passed a bill that would ban those automated cameras 
than hand out speeding tickets. Similar camera bans have been proposed over the years but failed to become law. Senator Brad Zahn, a longtime opponent of the speed cameras, says he believes the makeup of the legislature has changed enough to give it a good chance to become law this year. The state of Iowa is no longer treating COVID as a public health emergency, but what about local hospitals? Why Unity Point officials say Iowa is not out of the pandemic just yet. Governor Kim Reynolds says keeping transgender girls out of some high school sports will save the sports for young women. What those young women told lawmakers just before a vote on that ban. So, the game? Governor Kim Reynolds said she wanted to sign a law this year requiring high school student athletes to compete as the sex they were born. Reynolds said without such a law, girls would eventually lose scholarships and opportunities to transgender athletes. I believe it is a fairness issue. I believe if we don't do something, it does start to eliminate girl sports. That was set up for a reason way back when. I don't know if we're trying to erase history once again, but it is a fairness issue. Last Thursday, a Senate subcommittee and the committee passed such a bill, but not before some impassioned testimony from students and doctors on both sides of the issue. Hi, my name is Ella Jasinski and I'm a sophomore at Moines Christian School. I'm here speaking to you to ask you to please save Iowa girls sports. I run track and cross country and running is something that challenges me in many ways. It challenges me mentally and it challenges me very physically. I spend countless hours, week after week, month after month, putting in hard work to achieve my goals in this sport. When I am in a race, I know that I'm not always going to be the fastest there, but I know that I could potentially be any girl in my race because there are biological girls inside me. If a biological male were to be standing with next to me, ready to race me, I know that physically I'm not built like them and I'm put at a huge disadvantage. This topic is not about any of us girls being scared to lose, but it is to protect sports that drive us to compete and that will ultimately impact our future. Even though a biological male can undergo hormone therapy, it doesn't change the fact that they are built bigger, stronger, tougher, and faster. Hormone therapy doesn't change the way they were created, and that is something that becomes unfair for all biological female athletes. God has put this matter in my heart, not only for me, but for every single Iowa girl in athletics. This doesn't just affect one race or season for us, but it can affect the future with opportunities being robbed from us. No matter how hard any of us girls can work to achieve our dreams in athletics, a biological male can achieve them faster and easier. If Iowa allows biological males to compete in female sports, there will be no more female sports. Hello, my name is Rachel Nisha and my pronouns are they them. I'm a junior at Des Moines Lincoln High School. As someone who's on the transgender spectrum, I believe that this bill is extremely dangerous trans youth. Not only is it invalidating trans young transgender women, it's also adding an extra obstacle to the hardships they already face on a daily basis. As a junior, I'm 16 years old. This bill would be affecting people way younger than me. There's no place for politics regarding children's physical and mental health. Trans children are still just children who want to feel protected and feel seen and feel included. 
I've heard the argument that people uh, assigned male at birth would transition to female to get an advantage in sports. The process of transitioning is extremely expensive and lengthy. Most of the time, it takes years to fully transition. Uh, getting the hormones themselves require multiple doctor's appointments, tons of letters, signing papers, followed by even more doctor's appointments, not to mention the fact that parent permission would be needed every step of the way. Um, this process takes at least a year, and that's if you're lucky. Most trans people have to do this for years before they even get to start their medical transition. This complicated process would prevent males from just transitioning to get an athletic advantage. Forbidding transgender students from participating in activities such as sports would be a direct attack on the development of young adults. Hello, um, I'm Katie Larsnody. Um, our goal as pediatricians, which I am one, is to keep our children healthy and safe. Um, transgender children, as discussed here already very eloquently and more elo eloquently than I could, are at real risk for poor mental health and poor physical health. But one of the biggest things that makes a difference for kids who are transgender is support from their family and support from their school. And actually the science shows that school and family support can prevent poor mental and physical outcomes, including suicidality, both in childhood and actually into adulthood. School support is essential for outcomes, the outcome of our kids and keeping them safe. Um, and of course, as everybody in this room acknowledges, this is why we're all here, sports are such an important part of our children being able to feel like they are part of their school and they are accepted. And when you tell a girl that she can't compete in her school team because she's not real with the girl, that's not accepted. Right? So um, all of our children, all of our children, all of our children deserve to feel accepted and safe at school. And so I'm speaking to oppose this bill. Now, if you vote against this bill today, I believe you are going against Title VII of the Civil Rights Act and God's command regarding natural law. You are discriminating against a true sex, <clears throat> the female sex. Discrimination, by definition, is a prejudiced outlook or treatment. It is damaging someone. It is damaging someone by judgment or action. By voting no today, you could damage the futures of biological girls who have God-given gifts. By your actions, you could take away future opportunities for hardworking biological girls, girls that have dreams and goals. I beg you, please do not take this away from me. Please do not take this away from my sister. Please protect the young of Iowa. Thank you. The House committee passed a similar bill last Tuesday, but where the House bill focuses solely on high school sports, the Senate bill would also include college sports in Iowa. Well, new COVID cases now just a fraction of what they were just a month ago. How the pandemic is still affecting central Iowa hospitals despite that drop. Cheap Gate, the division of adult and teen challenge.
Last week, the Iowa Department of Public Health reduced the number of COVID case updates to once every Wednesday. And last Wednesday, they reported just under 7,400 new COVID cases in the previous seven days. That's down 12% from just two days earlier and down around 80% from cases reported just one month before. So is the pandemic finally ending here in Iowa, or is this just a temporary drop before another spike in COVID cases? Last week, I spoke to Tim Mulrooney, Vice President of Unity Point Health. He says his hospital is hopeful, but COVID is still a big factor in the kind of care they can provide. Obviously, we're in a new um, era. The COVID-19 proclamation in Iowa um, is over. Um, what do you make of that? Uh, ending and, and kind of turning the page on, on the pandemic here in the state? Yeah, practically speaking from with the ending of the proclamation, nothing in the work that we do has changed from yesterday to today. So the same care and what we need to do to care for every patient who presents to our facilities, um, that's going to be ongoing. Our community needs to recognize that um, we do see some things getting better, um, but nonetheless, we still have a high number of patients admitted to our hospitals with COVID. Um, it's heading a better direction, um, but we still have a, a lot of very acute patients um, in our facilities that are unfortunately still suffering from COVID. Um, as you kind of were touching on there, moving forward, knowing that we've kind of seen this movie before. Yeah, and I, I think we we have definitely felt that at points where it feels like we should be past COVID, maybe a little further on than we than we are. Um, so I, I think that gets where we're very cautious as well, too. And I, I think we still need to be, you know, vigilant. It's still impacting our operations at the end of the day. Um, you know, we still have over 100 patients today that are admitted to COVID in our Des Moines hospitals. Um, and, you know, that's still causing some, you know, delays in our emergency department and patients having to be held there as well, too. Um, you know, I think... Um, my guess is maybe as good as anybody else's of what we'll see next. We hope that over the next weeks and months ahead, we'll continue to see diminishing COVID cases. Um, but then likely going into next fall, we could see another uptick in cases. But I think the good news, this every time we kind of go through this, we learn from the last time. We can apply new lessons and be better prepared for it. And, you know, certainly things we were dealing with back in March of 2020, um, we're not dealing with today. Um, you know, we have therapeutics, we have vaccines, we have personal protective equipment. Um, so we have a lot of those things, I think, to better manage it, no matter what comes next this time around. Um, albeit, um, it does get exhausting on the hospital side to continuing to go, you know, kind of on those um, uh, peaks and valleys that we have to deal with with COVID. I think where we're seeing some even more positive data is that if you look across all of Unity Point Health, um, we're seeing our positivity rate for our own COVID testing start to go down. The peak point um, back in January was about 35% of those tests were coming back positive. Today, that's about 10%. Still would like to see it lower, but you know that's another positive sign as well too. Um, you know, but we still, again, have a lot of those same challenges that we had um, in mid-January. Um, we are being able to do a little bit, you know, some of the elective procedures that we were holding back a little bit. We're doing a little more now, not all the way back. With that, are there certain ones that are still too low priority? Where, where with the elective procedures are you? Yeah, and I think it's important to note um, any patient on our surgery schedules today who's having an elective procedure would probably not consider it elective. Um, elective only means because we can schedule it out a few days or maybe in a week or two in advance. Uh, these are still patients that require care as well, too. So we don't really want to delay anybody in terms of the care they're receiving on that um, and in terms of an elective procedure. Um, but what we're really trying to make sure we do are those patients who require a bed after their procedure. We want to make sure we don't bring people in, have them have a procedure, and then not be able to place them appropriately. Now, while most bills the legislature passed last week only made it out of committee, one made it all the way to Governor Reynolds' desk for her signature. The money that new law means for schools coming up. Oh, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means...
Governor Kim Reynolds signed a law last week adding $159 million to next year's education budget. That's an increase of 2.5% over this year's school budget. That brings Iowa's education spending to $3.6 billion next year. 80% of that money goes towards pre-kindergarten through 12th grade schools. But while many bills survive Fun A Week for more debate, others didn't get enough support from lawmakers. Those are likely to be dead for the rest of the year. They include a bill that would have mandated a live camera in each Iowa classroom and a bill that would ban the Iowa Utilities Board from using eminent domain to build private projects. Another Fun A Week occurs weeks from now. That's when Senate bills must pass out a full House committee and House bills out of a full Senate committee or likely they will be considered dead for the rest of the year. Thank you for joining us for KCCI 8 News Close Up. We will see you back here next Sunday at the same time. Have yourself a fantastic day.